of the day, uh, the two of us built a bush baby. Um, how many hours did we do with it? About 200. 200 hours. Uh, and that's where the whole passion started. He came up, he said, well, Dad, you're retired now. We've got to keep you busy. What do you want to do? So I don't know. I said, well, maybe you should build bikes and restore them or you know, do something together. And it was a beautiful bonding story for me, son, father and son, to do this. And uh, we started restoring bikes. It all actually started not as an, a business idea at all. It started with me wanting man cave, to... cave, basically, for you, for starters. Obviously, <laughs> you got to have a man cave. I bought my first classic BMW, which was a 1979 um, R80. I actually rode around and somebody stopped me and said, I want your bike. So I said, no, you can't have it, but we can make you another one. That's when I approached my dad. I said, we're going to build a second one. That's how it started. And we actually built one as a spec bike, but it, it, it got a home even before we were halfway done. It wasn't long and we were inundated with calls. I said, there's your answer. There's obviously a market for this. So that's how it started. And we started with a bobber style. And you did how many? Basically 40 bobbers. 40 bobbers, yeah. So woke up feeling guilty chopping all these classics. So we thought maybe we should restore, restore them rather than chop them up. We still do the odd custom and it's, it's fun, but um, it, it's, it's difficult because people change their mind and that's the whole idea of custom is you want to build your own thing. So it's just a difficult thing to, to do because it's, it, people will phone you and say, can you change this? But if you change this, you also impact on that. Restoration is quite easy. You say, would you like it like the day it left the factory? Uh, what I appreciate about uh, doing things together is that my son, appreciates what I do. So he said, uh, your first bike, what was that? So I said, it was a Honda C110 50cc. He said, when was that? I said, a uh, 1964 model. The first one that came out of the four speed, a red one. There was a, a spare piston. And I mean, pistons all look the same. I took the bike to your house, parked around the corner. I gave you the piston. I yes. said, look what I found. And you said, oh, that's a Honda C110 piston. There, that was your first bike. This was my first bike, yes. And he gave me an envelope and I opened it up, there was a key inside, a Honda key and a letter. To Dad from Freak. Time to pay back. And I spoke to my mom later that, that uh, evening and she said, you're still sitting on it. That bike's been fully restored, it's at my house. Uh, I don't even want to ride it because it's to get hurt. So my, my dad is always telling me about uh, when, he, when he finished school, he had his dream car, which was a uh, 1934? 34, yeah. 34 Ford. He painted it bright yellow and always into the detail about this hot rod that he built. It ended up being his wedding car. When I got married, uh, we said, well, that would be quite cool if you still had that car. And he said, well, when are you getting married? I said, well, nine months time. Yeah, he built me the exact same car and he painted it the exact same color. And you got married uh, in it. I got married in it. Well, not in it, but it was the wedding car. It's quite a bit of, of history when it comes to to petrol and cars and family. It seems to be in our blood. So you'd have to build a yellow one for Oliver one day. I'll see if I can just buy the, your one back. It sounds easier. <laughs> uh, some progress on the on the R80GS that we spoke about last time. Frame Gerald's completely redesigned the subframe and manufactured it so that it looks lovely. Front brake, we've managed to eventually have the disc talk to the, the caliper. So this bike's progressing quite nicely. The same problem we have with this is also with the Dakar. We're now waiting on quite a few spares. In the, uh, the Dakar, we finally finished the tank uh, shaping. Outside size is 50, so um, it looks the part at least. Gerald's completely redesigned it uh, to be as close as possible to the, the, the replica, replica we're building. So in the meantime, done all the manufacturing for the footrests. So next would be to get this tank um, finish it off, paint it, make it look like a real deal, and then that'll be the plug to make the mold to make the tank. We've got the subframe redesigned. Now the biggest issue is waiting for the body parts. The engine has arrived at the rebuilders and they're quite excited, so those parts have luckily arrived, so that should be underway as we speak. Small things to complete, complete the, the, the big jobs, but we're hoping it'll happen quite soon. Just an update from where we were last. I had to re-modify the, the foot pegs because they didn't look, well, you can say aesthetically pleasing. The same with the subframe, we've now welded it up and obviously to the best of our ability, 
ground it down and smooth it out. There's still a few places to um, touch up. And we also finished welding the, the swing arm to sort of modif modify the triangle, which is this piece here, to accommodate the brake switch. So we also tried to keep the, you know, the original exhaust and you know, the way it flows. I started welding um, in the trade school. That was 1978, so um, obviously advanced to um, MIG welding and TIG welding. Obviously, we started off, you know, <clears throat> doing arc welding, and then um, did my apprenticeship, um, and there I learned the finer arts of of TIG and MIG. Also a bit of aluminium welding. So yeah, I've been welding for 35, 40 years, so I'm sure I know something by now. I was nervous.